A little bit about my story. Uh, I was born and raised in a small town, Glace Bay, Nova Scotia. Um, it's a town where I guess um, a lot of partying is like acceptable within young teenagers. It's kind of like the thing to do. Um, it's uh, kind of like an inn, like it's uh, socially acceptable for sure. Um, I started at a very young age of 13 years old um, and I always I always did it just to kind of fit in with like the older crowd. I always had older friends that were older than me. So I was kind of trying to prove a point that I can like kind of keep up with them. Um, eventually, um, like my sports, all my, my extracurricular activities kind of take, uh, took a backseat to uh, my addiction. And I just wanted to go out and, and just like be that guy, like uh, kind of like the class clown of like all my friends and just make everybody laugh. And, there was a point where I just wasn't doing that anymore and it came to the point where nobody wanted me around um, basically because it was too much, like uh, too much for them to handle. And uh, so I always like moved around, bounced around, ran around, ran away from like everything. Like ran away from my addiction to pick it up again in another town, uh, meet new friends and kind of see if they'd accept me for like exactly who I was and what I was at that time. Um, but it never seemed to work out. I always burnt it right to the ground and moved on to the next town and then it was just like, ongoing from there um, then I, um, I ended up finding my way out to uh, the Alberta oil patch there where um, the lifestyle I was living was uh, was very acceptable um, it was it was a thing to do and I felt so comfortable doing it um, but it came like to terms with like I, I just couldn't do it anymore I couldn't keep up with it um, I was just burning my life to the ground nobody wanted anything to do with me even my co-workers um, at that time just to, they they even couldn't handle it and it was acceptable to be doing those things and it came to the point where they just couldn't couldn't do it with me anymore. Um, then I reached out for help. Um, I ended up coming to Vancouver in May 2018 and it was um, honestly the best decision I ever made in my life. Um, the, where, where it's gotten me, where it's taken me, where I see my future now is uh, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's a miracle. It really is an actual miracle that I'm here actually doing what I can do um, to help people like that are in the same situation coming from all walks of life and it's uh, such an honor and a pleasure to be able to help them and show them that, you know, like we're here to help, like we're here to help you guys. And um, it's such an honor and I wake up every day knowing that I'm able to suit up and show up um, for what I do for a living now. And I wouldn't change that for the world. Um, I absolutely love it. Um, it. It's taken me places where I've never thought I'd ever, ever, ever in my life be taken. And uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to do that. My treatment experience evolved over time through uh, connections through the other clients and like personal, like just the personal connections that we all had and uh, like getting to know the program, which I had no idea. I had nothing, not a clue about uh, the program of recovery whatsoever and uh, kind of hopping into that. It kind of just, it was like the, like they say, the keystone to, to the whole thing, right? And uh, just learning about that and going into group and, and talking to the counselor and just learning so much. Um, it's just true actual connection. Um, I get to be Doug, like I never really experienced a true Doug, like and now I get to do that, I'm always walking around with a smile, I'm like one of the happiest go lucky guys now, like I'm not living in, in fear and anxiety and like I don't, uh, I don't think too much as I used to now, um, life is pretty good today, life is, is perfect, it, it's, it's everything and then some for sure, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back, I wouldn't change it. For anything in this world, um, I get to experience life, and life gets to experience Doug. The the impact I had um, with my family growing through my addiction uh, wasn't good. Like I didn't get along with my mom. Like we could barely be in the same room together, and we were just at each other. Um, but now, what it's like today, like. If I don't call her within like two days, she's like messaging me, oh my God, are you okay? How's everything going? And, uh, but usually like now I get to sit there, I call my parents every day, catch up with them. Like before it'd be like weeks, months, like I wouldn't talk to like any of my siblings. Um, recently I just took a trip up to the Yukon Territory and see my brother, like, and I never really got the opportunity to do that. I, although one point I did live up there with him, but through my addiction, it just kind of like, it wasn't good. I wasn't in a good situation and I was putting him in a bad spot too. 
um, but now I get I got to go up there for a week and, and, and enjoy those moments and catch up with him and like um, the connections that I have with my with my siblings and my parents now compared to what it was like before it's it's phenomenal um, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for, for anything in the world um, they've always supported me though they've always been there to help me to guide me um, although I wouldn't take those suggestions because I thought you know uh, Doug knew best but uh, but now I, I get to sit there and be present with them and and like now my mom gets to go to bed every night knowing that I'm okay and she's not going to get a phone call like hey you know like something something terrible happened and uh, I'm glad that I get to finally give that to her over like 20 some years of being in a heavy addiction um, she finally gets to uh, go to bed at night and know that uh, her baby boy is going to be okay. Coming into the program now um, kind of taught me a lot of a lot of different things about family and and like the hurt and the pain that I put them through um, from my addiction. And now I get to like be present in the moments and really appreciate them. Like when I travel home, like I'm with my kids, like most of the time, like I have them and I appreciate them moments and I, I share that time with them. And I just like things that I took for granted um, before, now I just kind of get to live and, and then and be in just in that moment, live in that moment, not worry about like what tomorrow's gonna bring or what happened yesterday. It's all about being in that one moment with those two little boys that um, I never ever like got to have because I was never in that moment through my addiction. I was always thinking about where am I gonna get my next drink or how can I make up an excuse to get out of the house. And uh, now I don't have to do that. I, I, I sit there and, and they're like my two little sidekicks and I, I miss them dearly. Um, and being so far away, they're on the other side of the country. Um, I still I still get to talk to them on a, on a, on a regular basis and <clears throat> and like still have that connection with them and, and like right now they're kind of younger they don't really understand like why it has to be like this um, but I know it's for for the best for them for right now and uh, hopefully maybe down the road um, we can like kind of reconnect and but uh, for, for right now it's uh, I wouldn't change it at all I, I, I wouldn't go back and and, and have living in, in, in that darkness with them, sitting back watching me essentially burn everything down to the ground again. So I'm very grateful for, for that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, of course I have lots of experience um, with like clients and, and their families. Like I do that on a regular basis. I'm in, I'm in contact with the families, touching base with them, especially with the clients. Like. Um, being their first point of contact and seeing seeing them like essentially like at their worst um, seeing them at their worst and like kind of just remembering like picking them picking them up or having them come being dropped off to us and then like three or four days later kind of seeing them just kind of straighten up and have a smile on their face and a little glow in their eye and like I try to um, connect with all the clients that I bring in like on a daily basis and see how they do and see how they're getting along, what we can do for them, is there anything that, that they may need or want and uh, like all, uh, pretty much all my clients kind of stick out to me like because I know what it's like, I've been there like um, it's, uh, it's hard, it's, it's hard, it's like some days are easier than others but, um, but knowing the end result that I'm possibly and together we can uh, uh, essentially is there and we're gonna help them change their life like like they did with me right mm -hmm. like I remember not too long ago like two years two and a half years ago mm -hmm. sitting in that uh, passenger seat of the van being picked up from the airport um, it kind of just um, I live step one every day what I would say to someone who is still struggling with active addiction um, there's help out there um, <clears throat> You don't have to live like that anymore. Like there's, there's a new freedom. Um, uh, reach out, reach out for help, and we'll reach back and we'll pull you in. 